Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Sandersides podcast with Cannibal Fat and One Lettered Wonder. Yay! <laughs> a surprise, it's us. Okay. Yeah. If, um, for anybody who caught when I did this with deodorant stick, um, <laughs> it's gonna be very similar. We'll be going through the series, Sandersides, and we'll be discussing episodes and the fandom and whatever else is relevant at the time whatever is relevant at the time (laughs) (laughs) yeah um so for for this first episode we're going to be covering the first four episodes of the series because they're short they're very short yes they're like 20 minutes to get through all four which is nothing compared to the later episodes (laughs) yeah i uh and not they're very long they're basically. very they're very long <laughs> uh we might have to split some of them up into two parts we'll figure that out later for right yeah. now <laughs> one yes how did you discover santa science how did you when did you get into the fandom okay so i got into the fandom a long time ago um i've been referred to as an og fander at certain points in time I became invested in the Sandersides fandom before Taking on Anxiety with Lily Singh came out. So back when he still had like even the um like the Broadway themed opening on his YouTube, I started getting into his vines and then I was just like, "Oh no, Vine is dying. How do I find this person?" So I was just like, "Well, let's check YouTube." And there was a YouTube account. And then, of course, Vine went down, and that's when Thomas started using it a lot more, so I was able to, like, keep up with, like, the episodes as pretty much as they were coming out. I think My True Identity was the only one out, um, potentially, when I started joining the Sanderside's fandom. Like, I'm from the beginning. <laughs> wow. I knew you were an older fan, but I didn't know you were, like... I'm vine old. <laughs> oh, I would know. I was vine old. Like I'm outy here, boys. <laughs> Man. And yeah, how did I... you? How did you get into Sanders' sides, cannibal? Um, why'd you say it like that? I'm accusing you. <laughs> of what? What did I do? This is this is a uh, what is the, what is it? You know when those cops, like, and the detective- An interrogation. And, and the, the interrogation is with a bright light in your face. It's just like, where were you at the night of Sandersides? <laughs> where were you when Sandersides dropped? <laughs> where were um, you when can line be good? <laughs> yeah, I discovered Sandersides- I first discovered it through some fan art somebody did. Oh, nice. It was Pringsiety ship art. Oh, <laughs> And um, at the time, I was really into, like, the Jacksepticeye and Markiplier ego stuff. Respect. And I thought Sandersides was supposed to be like that. So that's why I looked into it at all. And the first time I ever watched Sandersides, I was actually, I was over at a friend's place, and we were playing Minecraft on his Xbox. I appreciate that, honestly. (laughs) And I had it playing in the background so the, the, my first wash of Sandersides, I processed like half of what was going on. And then after I got, um, I got into the fandom just before accepting Anxiety. Oh, nice. So I was, I got in early enough to still be considered an older fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, and at that point the fandom was small enough that you could basically still consume, easily consume fan work that was created early, early on. Oh, right, yeah. Because there wasn't, the fandom was a lot smaller. I feel like after accepting Anxiety... That's when, that's when people started really joining yeah, that's, up here. Yeah, I got in, like, a, just before that happened. <laughs> the first big boom, I guess. The first big boom. Because that's when everything went crazy, too. Especially during, like... Everybody kind of lost their shit around accepting anxiety. Because that's when, like, there was, like, a legitimate... Almost, like, feeling like a story arc to the whole, like... 
Sanders size as a whole. And so that's when it became like a little bit more, I guess, not like necessarily like it became more interesting, but it's just like there was more to like hold on to besides just fun characters and fun situations. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think um, the story, the fact that um, the later episodes, they start having a story, that's what started drawing more people in. No, I think I think you're right. There are hints of, like, story happening in some of the earlier episodes, but it does not take off until, like, really accepting anxiety, so. Yeah. Until, isn't accepting anxiety... Like, the next episode is the mark of season two. Yeah, after the two-parter of accepting anxiety, they do a behind-the-scenes thing, and then they do um, the fitting-in episode, which is kind of uh, what people mark as the start of season two. Are we still in season yeah. two, or are we in season three now? We're in season two. This uh, next one is going to be the yeah. last... This is the it's going to be the season finale. Right, right, right. Um, spoiler alert! Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, w- uh, for anybody listening, we're going to assume that everybody has already seen the episode, uh, has seen the whole series. Or at least has caught up to, <laughs> at least, at least for this part, the first season, which is My True Identity to the Accepting Anxiety Part 2. Yeah. Okay, can I just talk about my favorite thing that you actually notice in my true identity that, like, doesn't come into play until later, until anxiety is actually introduced? Yes, yes, go ahead. Logan's positioning on the stairs. <laughs> okay. Okay. He mo- Get off the computer! Sorry, cat. <laughs> my favorite thing is just, like, at the very beginning, you see logan or the logic character standing in front of the stairs but later on oh my god he spoilers moves... his oh, name. Name. Oh, just, <laughs> sh- sh- don't tell anyone he moves over to i oh, now i'm just like oh god do i say his name <laughs> no you, you can say his name i was just giving you shit okay cool no he moved logan moves over for virgil eventually which i think is kind of interesting because i don't know if thomas like actually planned to have an anxiety character and then, because if he did, I feel like he would have put Logan in, like, the proper position that he is in now. Have you watched the Patreon, um, behind the, uh, no, not behind the scenes, um... The director's commentary? Yes. No, I haven't yet, because I'm bad. <laughs> you haven't? Okay. No, spoil um, for me. He, spoil they for only me. have him up to, uh, New Year's Lies. Right. New Year of Lies. Oh, what's that episode called? It doesn't matter. No, that, the, li- the, the lying, the the song episode, which is yeah, the first, the first which, song episode. A new year of lying to myself in song. Yes, that is that episode. But in the director's commentary, I mean, he, Thomas has said it before, but he says it again in the in the director's commentary that Virgil was not a planned character. Virgil was only supposed to be a. He was only supposed to be in his first episode, and that was it. That was all he had planned for him. Oh my gosh. And then he came back and kept coming back when nobody asked for him. I'm sure everybody asked for him. Everybody asked for anxiety to come back. Yes. People had the hots for the sassy emo boy in eyeshadow. Like, they needed more of him. Yes. For my true identity, it's so much different than how the series is now. Was, like, the main thing that I, like... Because I like I was rewatching them, of course, but the main thing is is that the, 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 they're so different. Like the characters seem like so much more evolved now, and it's kind of nice to see that character growth that happens later on. But I was, <laughs> what is what is your biggest fear? Spiders and rejection, and what's at the bottom of the ocean? <laughs> yes, I actually wanted to bring up the the fear thing. Um. I mean, first, you could totally see that as, like, foreshadowing for... This first episode has a lot of accidental foreshadowing. Oh, like that one part where Roma's just like, (laughs) we wouldn't want to be our own villain now, would we? Which is, some people took as a reference to Virgil, but can also be a reference to the lean green stupid machine that comes up later. (laughs) Or, or... The yellow boy, or anybody else. <laughs> or, or fruits and vegetables, yeah. 
But yeah, the fear list specifically. I remember years ago somebody did an analysis of it on Tumblr. Yeah. I for future reference, I'll probably be discussing old Tumblr posts a lot. <laughs> Hell yeah, bring it on. Um, I have no hope of being able to find this again. If I okay, fair even enough. if I really wanted to. It was a while ago. <laughs> I think it was before Remus even was introduced. I mean, there always is that possibility. My I have beef with the fandom. <laughs> oh, so do I. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and specifically, because we're talking about the fear thing, is that it's just like, there's a whole bunch of people who are just like, Remus has a fear of rejection, you know, because of- No, he doesn't. XYZ that happens in, like, his episode. But I'm just sitting here like- like, I understand that, like, maybe the first season isn't the best, like, kind of thing, simply just because the characters have changed so much. But Roman literally says in the first fucking episode that his biggest fear is rejection. And so I'm just sitting here like, you're all, you all suck. I don't think Remus has any fears. Remus doesn't have any fears. He has no regrets. He has no fears. But we're not here to talk about Remus right now. We're still talking about- we're still on the first episode. We got a whole season to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard not to talk about him. No, because he's funny. <laughs> a lot of people had a lot of issues with him and uh, our snake boy when he popped oh up. Oh my gosh. We'll, we'll get to those- we'll get to that when we get to those episodes. <laughs> I have so much to say about those, those specific periods in the fandom. Oh god, okay. Alright, my true identity, everybody. <laughs> but stay focused. The fears. <laughs> spiders, obviously. Patton is scared of spiders. That's been a consistent part of his character for some reason. A running theme. I find it very interesting, though, that Patton is scared of spiders. Like, that's his biggest fear. Mm -hmm. And then it's... Us, and then Virgil has spider themes, and then they become besties, I guess. No, I love that, though. <laughs> it's sort of like overcoming his fears, I guess. Yeah, no, Virgil even has a pet spider. Like, it's a plastic spider, but that's we don't talk about that part. We can pretend it's a real spider. <laughs> uh, Roman's is rejection. Um, Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, given especially his... later on. <laughs> yes. He has, everything about like, his existence. He has a whole fucking meltdown about it. <laughs> and then Logan's is the bottom of the ocean, which could also be interpreted as Logan's worst fear is the unknown. Ooh, that is true. Because, like, his whole, his whole thing is figuring out and finding facts and things like that. Mm -hmm. so... His whole thing is knowledge. So when he doesn't know something, it's hard for him, which we actually do end up seeing later on as well, where it's just like when he's not the one with the the facts or the ideas and stuff like that, he gets all kinds of butthurt about it. Yes. <laughs> Potentially rightfully so, but like that's a different story. I don't know. The, the fear thing specifically, I just really like it. Um, and then the whole fear thing in general could be seen as foreshadowing for anxieties um eventually literally every other character <laughs> yeah <laughs> remus potentially this orange side whoever the fuck they may be but also again janice simply just because he's got um he keeps hiding things and that's terrifying sometimes they have they have beef about that in a later episode too which is funny they ask a lot of um in-depth and personal questions within like this episode as well like again biggest fear but like what kind of contributions do you want to make in the world and you kind of get to see a couple of those things happen as well i think Patton me mentions just like like what makes you happiest when you're creating or something like that and thomas is like i just really like making fun and lighthearted videos because those are what are fun for me and you kind of get to see a little bit later on as well um his evol like as he evolves in making these episodes as well along with branching out from like a couple of just the fun family lighthearted things not to mention the whole 
uh, the question of what do you do? No, but like, what do you do kind of thing. And you took a... <laughs> I Sorry. don't even have words. That was a lot more of a like in-depth interpretation <laughs> of the episode than what I have. <laughs> Get on my level. <laughs> um, yeah, the first, uh, that's honestly, wow. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, Thomas confirms, uh, in the, um, director's commentary that yes. these first episodes were very much just self-affirmations and things mm -hmm. he knew to be true about himself. And he didn't actually... The first episode he does any research for um, is the anxiety episode, I believe. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, though. The first cause... couple of episodes, it's just affirmations. I did not know that. But it also makes a lot of sense, especially when you go back and watch them, where he's just like, this is like my passion for this. This is me doing this. Also, dad jokes. And also, I was good at science at one point in my life, which comes up later on as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to mention that there's a whole scene where logic is like, uh, what do you hope to do? I think it was like, what do you hope to do with your education or something like that? Yes. And, and Thomas is like, I want to do something for the environment. And then he doesn't do that. <laughs> and then he doesn't do that. We may have done that off, off, off screen, but he did not do it. He did not do it on it screen. Didn't, except there were no. It did not. Oh, fuck. The only thing oh, he did. For I just broke my fidget spinner. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, we're good. I got it. The only thing he does for the environment is rap about it, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, these these first few episodes are super lighthearted, and I think they do a really good job of setting up, like, the basic setup for these episodes. And I know he maybe kind of, like, semi-pigeonholed himself into this, like, talking to himself in the four corners of his room. Pigeonholed? Kind of pigeonholed himself into this, yes. But at the what same does that time, mean? Um, I've never heard that before. <laughs> you've never heard that term before? Mm -hmm. Am I old? Oh, God. <laughs> No, Pigeon hold himself into this, uh, basically saying that he cut himself a hole and then he felt like he had to stick to that hole, or like he had to stick to this this step, this process. So he, do you mean like real Thomas in terms of the series? Yes. Um, I don't think so. I mean, he he I'm definitely did. He, he definitely fed into like what his fans at the time wanted, which was more Sandersides. That's true. But I, I don't think he, like, forced himself to continue. I don't think so either. But the thing is, is like, I hope he doesn't feel like he pigeonholed himself, because I actually just really like this setup. Because it's such a super basic setup, but it does exactly what it needs to, which is just, it shows each character doing its own thing, but in its own fancy, fun little way. Like, inside out, but better. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why Inside Out wasn't that good of a movie. I don't know why people like it so much. It was decent. It had, I it had, I didn't really care for more, it. Honestly, it had it had the morals that it needed, and that was about it. <laughs> it told the story it wanted to, but it, it's not. I don't know. That movie isn't worth watching again, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, the concepts that are like inside of it. Hey, Inside Out. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I'm actually really glad that he chooses this setup, especially for, like, the first, like, couple of episodes and stuff like that, because it gives him a good base, you know? It's just, like, this person stands here and does this, this person stands here and does that, and I think that works out, I think it worked out really, really well for him, especially when real Thomas, not character Thomas, was figuring, like, his shit out, because this is the beginning of the series, uh, the entire series, where he's trying to just figure out exactly what he actually wants to do with his YouTube channel in general. And I think Sandersize was just a fun little, how do you do it? And it grew into something that even he was not prepared for. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I was gonna say I'm glad the series turned out the way it did, but 
I'm gonna stop myself because I don't know if, if I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll um, find out later. We'll get to talk more in depth about some of the f more fun episodes <laughs> later. <laughs> right yeah. now, everything's just set up and it's just build up and it's just like a little one-off episodes and shit. Yeah, they're just figuring out characters because, like, fuck it. In my true identity, Logan smiles, which he like Logan ever does is for the rest of the series. Logan in this first episode is basically another Patton. It's kind of funny. Like, obviously, he's a little bit more on the logical side of things. Go figure. But he's definitely happier. Yeah, in these earlier episodes too, they definitely um there is uh. We'll see it later, but there is more emphasis on Logan being themed around a teacher. But I feel like in the later episodes, they just kind of drop that. Yes. And then he turns he, into the exposition character. He turns into the exposition character, but he does it so well! <laughs> yeah, I love um, when we get moments where Logan just, like, ran uh, he just rambles for, like, five minutes it's straight. So He'll just good. talk about something. I love that because I love. That's you, how I like to absorb info. information. <laughs> like, just give me the info. <laughs> yeah, I also think it's really funny um, how in the early episodes Logan is supposed to be every fact Thomas has ever learned, but the then movie. later it just turns into any fact ever. <laughs> any fact ever, anything even, that Thomas doesn't even know himself, but yeah. Selena like a parse gum, but <laughs> <laughs> I also think in these early episodes, Patton has he definitely feels more like a dad. He definitely feels more like a dad. He's almost not as strict as he gets in later episodes because he's just kind of there. <laughs> I don't think he's strict in later episodes. I think he's just more. He gets a. He gets a little bit more strict as the episode, not necessarily as episodes go along, but it's just like there's a very big difference between like this first uh, my true identity in the first couple episodes, especially in the um oh which one was it the growing up one because like he's just like you can stay up and you can do whatever and this time he's all making jokes and shit like that, but then in the later episode he's just like. You can't waste time because that makes you a bad person. I don't- yeah, no, I don't think he's more strict. I think in those episodes, he's just forced to answer questions he's never had to think about before. Ooh, okay, okay, I see where- I see what you're picking up. I, I see what you're picking up. See what you're putting down, see what you're picking up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but I like in this first episode, mm -hmm. um... You get more dad vibes from him because he he like yes. walks in and he's like, "Hey, I'm down to do that." And then the other characters are like, "Do, do that thing that I feel <laughs> like you see like teenagers in movies do, where they're really embarrassed about their parents." And oh shit. my god, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is there is there four people in this room or is it just me? And they're all just like, ah. That, that's a, a good joke. I still like that joke a lot. No, no, it was great. Especially especially as a first drop. Like, it was so good. <laughs> it was a clever one. <laughs> it was classic. It was a thinker. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have anything else to say about this first episode? Um, Not particularly. Honestly, I just... It was a good... I think I feel like as an episode to a series, I feel like it was a good introduction to, like, something that's going to be much bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do, right, so to the... we do get to see Sacagawea the hamster in this that episode, though. The one episode the that one episode the hamster shows up in. Before Janice stuffed her under his hat, and we never saw her again. <laughs> exactly. She lives there now. That's just... That's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> I think... <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll talk about the hamster when we get to that episode. Yes. <laughs> I love that episode so much. Alright, the next episode is Way to Adult, which is a solo single episode for Patton and Thomas. Yeah, we get a one-on-one. -on -one. I, I say single solo because Patton is the only side that appears during this episode. <laughs> the others aren't even mentioned, and my favorite part about this is that, like, Thomas 
it's like he didn't even plan for Patton to be there. <laughs> He's just like, oh, what are you doing here? And Patton's just like, I'm here to kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, this... Um, I enjoy Patton in these early episodes a lot more than I do. He kind of annoys me in later episodes. Yeah. <laughs> He's fun. I Which like is an opinion. He's... Which is an opinion. No, it's fact. <laughs> <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> No, he's he's a lot more fun in these early episodes. I do like I do like early age Patton. He's a goofball and he does a good job at it while also still being a little bit like parental, but not in like I don't want to say almost like the stupid way, you know. But he's in a good he's a good he's a good parent. He trying. Yeah. Um. He's he's a lot more mature. In these early episodes. Yes. He comes up so. with poignant questions to ask Tom- Tomothy. Um, mm-hmm. These, he- this episode, we yeah. are introduced to beloved character Steve the Stove. Fan favorite. Fan favorite Steve the Stove. I remember... One of these, there was a drought between episodes. Yes, I know. Yes, yes. (laughs) And the fandom went whole ass crazy naming every single side piece character we possibly could come up with. Every single character. And for some fucking reason, the printer became popular. (laughs) The printer became popular. Dr. Sticker. And then Steve the Stove. This is is the episode with Steve the Stove. I remember naming characters. I did that. Yeah, um... I was actually part of that process. Yeah, I don't think I had a hand in naming any of the characters, but I was keeping up to date. <laughs> oh god, it was a bananas, but like, in a crazy ass way. But, way too adult is basically just Patton just being like, here's things that you do well as an adult, and here's things that you need to do, like, need to do as an adult, and it's basically just an episode of like... It's okay to take your time, but you have to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. These first eventually. two episodes, um, mm-hmm. uh, I really liked them when I was younger. Because when I saw these, the, like, who am I as a person and, and what am I going to do as an adult and things like that were things that I was worried about. Mm-hmm. So I liked these episodes a lot because they kind of were, like, comforting to me at that point. To be fair, a lot of Thomas's audience was at a younger age. Yes, so, his a lot of his audience was and still is mm-hmm. like twelve to sixteen year old girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the age of people that are dis- that were discovering him and are still discovering him. So for like a kid who's just like seventeen who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, it's having somebody who's older and adult basically say here's some things that you do do well and then here's some things that you need to work on and that it's not a race i mean that was a pretty good message and it's also fulfilling that whole like family friendly video vibe that he had going from the first one as well mm-hmm. <sighs> Patton's such a yeah. sweetheart in this one though he's a big, big, big. <laughs> this is also the first episode where the adultery joke starts this is the adultery episode! Oh my god. And One more running joke <laughs> for the masses. Um, the plastic plate on the stove. I hate it. <laughs> Thank you. I that. have a story about that. No! Don't tell me you did that. No, I didn't. We had a oh. roommate, though. <laughs> <laughs> when um, I was younger, we had a roommate. We had a plastic cutting board. No, I know exactly. That what was sitting on top I of our it. stove. I hate it. <laughs> and our roommate, he was trying to cook something. And he, the plastic uh, cutting board was sitting on one burner. And his like pan or whatever was on the other. And he turned on the wrong burner. I, oh my god. And the, it, the um, plastic cutting board melted onto the stove and yep. set it on fire. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> um we caught no nothing but the stove was damaged. But oh god, but the, what the, the hell? Board we couldn't use that burner anymore because the board was stuck to the burner. 
just melted plastic. Oh my god, that's so funny though. <laughs> but every time I see this episode and that plastic plate bit comes up, I remember when that happens. Oh my god. Thankfully, I've never done that. To be fair, I'm also not the best chef, but I can do my taxes. So We don't have plastic plates at my house, so, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> not anymore, right? <laughs> Actually, we still have a plastic cutting board. <laughs> But we use, um, our, uh, at least I use the wooden one more, so. Oh, fancy. Look at you go. The stove, sorry. <laughs> That's all I really had to say about this episode. There wasn't much to go over. It was... For me. It's Thomas's, like, start into, like, using those characters a lot more, too. Because, like, he really did not need to, like, talk about Thanksgiving and being an adult in this matter. But he did anyway, <laughs> so... I think in um, the director's commentary, Thomas says that, okay, I could be misremembering, but I, I think he says that the Thanksgiving thing, where it was like just him out of all of his brothers, I think he said that wasn't even true. That was just part of the series. Art is a lie. Nothing is real. Yeah, no, I mean- So I, I could be wrong, this but I think that's what he said. <laughs> no, I, I totally respect that. And also, art is a lie and nothing is real. Thank you, Bo Burnham. Because it's just, like, this, something that I think became at least very apparent during, a, like, a later episode and things like that was just, like, while Thomas does share some, like, similarities with character Thomas, they are two fundamentally different people, and some of the experiences that character Thomas goes through may or may not be things that actual Thomas has done. Mm -hmm. I remember when there was still a point in time where people thought, every episode that, like, involved real-life stuff um, was relevant to real-life Thomas's real life. Because <laughs> I, I remember when Moving On came out, there were people that were talking about it as if it were a real thing. Well, the thing is, with, um, with Moving On, uh, he was and he had gone through a breakup. Like, it was the whole point of, like, the whole um, What Did You Do With My Heart song. That was a song that Joan had written for him to sing and help, maybe help with, like, the catharsis of a potential heartbreak. So there are possibly some similarities in Moving On that, like, actually did happen for Thomas. But there's also a good chance that, like, those memories have been falsified, even if, like, the situation is similar. Mm -hmm. But definitely, like... Not everything that happens in this series is an actual real life thing that happened. It could be yeah. based. It could be based on a real life event, but it may not be the actual story. Like one of the later episodes, along with moving on, he talks about the audition that he does, which is the, mm -hmm. um, which is actually one of my favorite episodes in the, in the first season, um, where it's Virgil versus Logan, which is fantastic, by the way. That's a great um, episode. It's one of my favorites. But it's just like, they're talking about this audition and magnifying events. Some of those events may have actually happened or like in very similar situations. Everybody has said, enjoy your this. Oh yeah, you too. And then going, ah, oh, motherfucker. Because like, I did not mean to say <laughs> not that. Me. <laughs> not me. Can't relate. Can't I relate. never make a mistake. I'm perfect. <laughs> I just don't, I just don't have social anxiety in that way usually. So I usually don't mind those mistakes but like anxiety in those episodes definitely overplays them magnifies them a for the sake of like the story yeah but yeah um, <laughs> do you have any more thoughts about this the second episode before we move on yes no wait no sorry <laughs> <laughs> i was like yes to which I would one <laughs> <laughs> you're like more thoughts on the second episode. It's just like, yeah, what do you have? Oh, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the third episode. Taking in anxiety with Lily Singh. I definitely remember when this one came out and the whole shit show that happened with it because they were just like, oh my god, anxiety! For most yeah. part, a lot of people had it like, they felt like the episode kind of helped because it was just like, it gave them tips and tricks to do. But also... Virgil is such an asshole in this episode. It's so good. <laughs> um, my note, the first note I have for this episode is just anxiety, my beloved. <laughs> anxiety. 
I, he, uh, Virgil Anxiety is considerably more aggressive in this episode than he is in later episodes, and I love that. Anxiety, later known as Virgil. I really actually enjoy this kind of anxiety. Granted, I'm okay <laughs> with, like, an anxiety that, like, tries to get along later on with everybody else due to character arc, whatever. But the thing is, it's just, like, anxiety itself is not a kind thing. It's usually mm -hmm. not, it's like, yes, we figure this out later, but usually anxiety isn't like the best thing. Yes, it can be helpful to you. Yes, it has its benefits. But for the most part, it comes out of fucking nowhere and it's jarring and it's sometimes just like really confusing because you don't actually know why it's there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, I... random princey. Sorry, random princey that shows up. <laughs> I hope and dream to get rid of my anxiety. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, Virgil, or I'll just say anxiety. Anxiety is, be all of the episodes, <clears throat> the episodes before accepting anxiety, where he's a lot more aggressive and mean to Thomas and to the other sides. I love that. that no, it's, is, it's so much fun. That's, it's fun, it's cool for the character, and I miss it. Honestly, yeah. he's not great in these later episodes. He he definitely softens, and like part of that is like character arc because he wants to try to start fitting. Uh, yeah, fitting he. In, but it would make. Sorry, go ahead. I was getting no, excited. Right. No, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> um, I I mean I I interrupted you. <laughs> I don't fucking remember what I was gonna say, so you might as well talk. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it it makes sense. Uh. We'll talk about this more when we get to the to accepting anxiety and stuff. It makes sense that he softens up in later episodes, but I don't like how much he changes. Really? Um, I just he kind of. So I want to clarify feel... that I'm. <laughs> he's Go ahead. Been, he's been woobified. Yes, <laughs> he's been <laughs> woobified. Um. <laughs> I'm, uh, I want to say that I'm a person who's very easily annoyed. <laughs> most things, most, the vast majority of people, even, like, my besties, annoy the hell out of me. That's funny. So when I say I'm, an I'm annoyed by something, and I'm not, like, s it, 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 that's pretty standard for me, honestly. <laughs> um, it's not the be-all, end-all that some people think it is. You're just like, yeah. that kind of sucks. <laughs> um... He annoys me in the later episodes. <laughs> you just... Um, I do sometimes wish that he... Like, that's actually something that happens, is he does something that's a little bit more biting, a little bit more of an asshole move, and everyone got mad at him, like, oh my god, he can't believe he snapped at Pat, and then it's just like, bruh. That did was you, his whole did character you, did early you for, on. <laughs> did you forget who he is? He's supposed to be snappy. He's supposed to be in your face. He's supposed to be a huge asshole. I don't. Yeah, know. he's he's <laughs> aggressive in your face. He's the kind of guy that would punch you for looking at him wrong. <laughs> Anxiety has a flight or fight reflex. He may actually punch you. That's always been my biggest thing with like later not only fandom interpretations of him and everything like that, but the thing is it's just, like, anxiety isn't nice. I don't know about mm -hmm. you, but my anxiety is not nice to me. It's kind of an asshole. And it's just, like, I understand that people want to be like, Virgil has anxiety. Do you think his anxiety is also kind to him? No, he I... that anxiety into more anxiety. <laughs> One, fa the, the fandom interpretation that Virgil has anxiety has always annoyed me. Are you, are there you... it is, annoyed again. <laughs> it, I don't like it. It's like, he doesn't have anxiety, he is anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's like, in the same thing with, like, Remus. Like, they were like, Remus has intrusive thoughts. He doesn't have intrusive thoughts, he is intrusive, intrusive thoughts. I definitely, I definitely feel that. I do think, like, simply just because of he, them being those representations of those, like, mentalities they do have to have those types of things though but like they're not affected the same way that people with anxiety or with intrusive thoughts are because mm -hmm. like yeah most people i mean there are definitely certain like like 
oh god was the exceptions to this whole thing but usually people with anxiety they're not usually as biting as Virgil is they're usually a little bit more afraid to say their mind, a little bit more afraid to speak their mind and things like that. It depends but, on the type of anxiety. Because, <laughs> like, I don't have social anxiety, but sometimes I get, like, futuristic anxiety about, like, oh, shit, what the fuck is going on sometimes. But I'm able to talk to people like nobody's business. So mm -hmm. it's just, like, my anxiety doesn't, like, manifest in, oh, my God, are they annoyed with me? I don't, I don't normally feel that. Like, okay, that's a you problem at that point. But, like, if I don't know what's going on, I'm just like, what is happening? Someone please tell me what's going on. And that's how my anxiety manifests. So it's just, like, my anxiety has no sense of direction is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I have um, GAD. Uh, and I'm actually, like, officially diagnosed with GAD. Oh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could get meds if I wanted, but I, I haven't. I, I, I haven't. Um... <laughs> I could get meds and they would be covered by insurance, but I'm too lazy. Oh, to. hell yeah! <laughs> get that insurance! <laughs> um, but yeah, um, uh, as somebody with GAD and how anxiety affects me, I do get really aggressive. Um, and, like, I'm very easily annoyed. Um, but as I've already said... <laughs> Do you think part um, of your annoyance is, like, a symptom of your anxiety, or is that just people are stupid? Uh, <laughs> I think it's, it, it <laughs> definitely stems from, it, part of it stems from my anxiety, but people are also stupid. <laughs> so <both. laughs> It's a little bit of both. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't get, um, I sometimes get, like, a minor social anxiety when I'm talking mm -hmm. to new people. Like when I started talking to you, I was pretty nervous. I am a but that's though. also because <laughs> that's also because I was like a fan of your content and shit. Oh yeah. When I first started talking to you, so um. Now you know the truth. Yeah, you're kind of lame. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but I'm not is... like nervous about it anymore. But yeah, because again, I'm lame, and you're obviously you've never done anything wrong in your life, so there's a clear power. I in the balance. am perfect. I okay. don't. I would be <laughs> appalled if anybody suggested I ever did anything wrong because I'm the I'm the example of perfect of what a perfect human looks like. <laughs> the epitome of perfection. The epitome of humanity. However, while we're bringing this up, though, about um, we mentioned this just a little bit ago as well. Character Thomas definitely has social anxiety to an extreme mm -hmm. amount. You yes, know? yes. And Virgil definitely plays a huge part in that. Because, like, right now, it's just, like, especially in this episode, while he's talking to Lily Singh, by the way, power woman, love her, um... I haven't actually, I haven't actually caught up with her, so if she's done anything bad, don't hold that against me, because I've literally only, get, like, I only watched this episode, like, I haven't watched I know her. her, I haven't watched her since middle school, I used to really like her videos, and I stopped watching her. <laughs> yeah, so if she's done anything wrong in the past, like, couple months, and, like, y'all are just gonna be like, oh my gosh, one, you're a terrible person for supporting her, I don't know, I don't know anything, don't come at me. Um, anyway. however, <laughs> I will gladly support any terrible misdeeds she is gonna <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Um, we support, we support evil women in this household. Um, character Thomas's social anxiety while he's talking to somebody like Lily, who is somebody that he knows, he's usually able to find to do it. But again, in later episodes where he's just like, I had to talk to people. It's just like, that's it's, actually, it's really... go ahead. <laughs> it's actually really annoying. <laughs> that's actually really funny that you mentioned that. Um... Oh my God. Because uh, Thomas, in the director's commentary, but I think he also mentioned it before. Go ahead. Um, he mentions how he was really nervous to be working with Lily. Are you serious? Oh my god. Yeah, he was super nervous about it, and he was like, y um, you'll see, like, he's super sweaty in that episode, and that's because he was so nervous about it. He was also wearing a fucking jacket. Yeah. Oh, the, um, the, the coveted black hoodie. Yeah, that black hoodie, for anybody who doesn't know. Um, I thought this was common knowledge, but apparently it's not, yeah. that Thomas got Virgil's hoodie from a thrift store. Yes, he LA. did. Yes, he did. And the I first remember time he, hearing this. 
The first time he put the whole costume together it was in Lily's bathroom. Uh huh. Be- right before they filmed. <laughs> right before they filmed, he picked up the jacket because apparently he just needed one, and then all of a sudden it was just like the jacket that he started using. Uh-huh. I, I- oh my thought God. it was because he was looking for. He needed was the he? costume. I don't honestly remember. I just know that. Maybe I it was just- a combination of both. I don't know. <laughs> He did definitely get it from a thrift store, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like to headcanon that Virgil got his jacket. He, My headcanon, I don't know if this would work, how this would work. Bring it um, on. In terms of uh, center sides lore and how the sides work, but my headcanon is that Virgil went to a thrift store, decided to go out back to their dumpster, and got the jacket out from there. He got it from a dumpster. True raccoon in action. Yeah, Virgil oh canonically God. doesn't bathe. <laughs> or at least he <laughs> bathes fully clothed. <laughs> that is true. That does happen as well. Yeah, that's why I said canonically. <sighs> he you go have a relaxing soak in the tub, and we're supposed to fill it up with water, and this doesn't help. It's Gatorade. Um, however, <laughs> going along Apparently with there were season. people who- there's people who don't know about the video, and I was oh, really disappointed. Oh, seriously? But yeah. those those collection those tiny collection of videos are honestly so cute. Peak peak. I wish Thomas would do more of that. Honestly, that's yeah. okay. I am me, and you are you, and that's perfectly fine. But I hate angst, <laughs> and I desperately <laughs> wish that Thomas would do more of those fun videos. If not only just to have a breather from the angst, but also because those videos are super fucking easy to do, and it would definitely give the fandom a uh, TS criticism, give the fandom a little bit something more to hold on to during, like, times of, like, long filming periods or, like, editing scripts and things like that. So this way the fandom at least hell has, like, a little bit of, like, ooh, fun character thing, because then everyone's gonna get dressed up in cosplay and, like, mad- ad-lib the fucking video and stuff like that. But it's just, like, he could do so much more. <laughs> he does too much, but he doesn't do enough at the same time. Mm. Honestly, I don't mind waiting for episodes. I think the longer we have to wait, the more it just weeds out people who are weeds all out into the, it. Weeds out, weeds the, out the fake fans! No, <laughs> it, Weeds out the weak. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something, that's actually something that we just disagree with. I wish you would do more little content and you're just like, nah, let him suffer. <laughs> yeah. I, I do think that's I, funny. Honest, well, I mean, when you've been in the fandom for so long, since yeah. we've both been in it since 20... Well, no, you've been in it before. A I've long, been in it since a, 2017. A long ass time. <laughs> yeah. Let's find uh, out. When did the first the, of these first episodes come out? My True Identity. Uh, the first ones come out in 2016. My True Identity came out five years ago, at the very least, from this. Yeah. So. We just uh, had an anniversary episode, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't remember. I forgot what. Okay, I forgot what number anniversary it was. Leave me alone. But yes. <laughs> My True Identity um, came out five years ago. I'm trying to find the exact date. October 19th of 2016. Mm. Um, one last thing that I will say about the, take, or at least potentially the one last thing I'll say about taking on anxiety is that it still fits in with the theme of like being for children and especially for like people who are starting to come of age because having anxiety, especially when like you're going into high school or you're coming out of high school or you're going into middle school or however old age you are because everybody has anxiety at any age, you never know, is that it's just like it does basically it puts things out in such a way that it's just like even like kids can pick it up you know it's just Mm -hmm. like what are you supposed to do take a deep breath say some positive (laughs) affirmations and stuff like that and i feel like it's still fitting that vibe Uh, he does eventually break out of it especially when it comes down to remus but at the same time it's just like it's still just fun happy content somehow even if this is like super serious Mm -hmm. i I actually have a I have a couple uh, more notes about yes. this third episode that I'm gonna blow through really fast, so we can get on to the next one. These are just little things, so that they're not worth having whole conversation about. Um, Virgil shows up and he's lounging, and I love that. <laughs> yes, peak peak bastard energy. To be fair, yes. <laughs> um, I just find it funny that he's like leaning back on the stairs. Which he also calls Thomas Kid, 
which I think is really funny. Oh my god. (laughs) Um. This is the start of him sitting on the stairs as well, which becomes his official spot as well. Uh... I think it would be really funny if in the next episode, Thomas just puts them all in different spots and doesn't <gasps> mention it. That would be fucking hilarious. Everybody's in that a would, fucking... That would, it would bother... It would bother that, so That would many bother people. so many people, and there would be so many stupid theories about it. <laughs> There'd be so many stupid theories, not to mention that people have actually already made theories about their standing positions in the first place. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't- I'm trying to remember what some of them are, but like, Princey's in front of the TV because that's like, where you get your creativity and imagination. Oh, I, I think I remember seeing a theory about that, actually. Yeah, no. And Patton's in front of the windows or some- for family-related reasons. It's- it's- I get that the joke is that the fandom likes to overanalyze, but guys, not everything has to have a meaning. God, it's not that deep. They're it's just like that, standing it's, there. It's a, it's a big painting on the wall, guys. Just leave it alone. It just it just looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Roman Roman is just kind of there. Oh my god, um, I forgot Roman was <laughs> there. <laughs> Oh yeah, he God. shows up, and he's like, hey, I like this episode because I think it kind of sets up the rivalry between Ooh. Virgil and Roman. It does, it does, it does. It definitely sets up that they don't like each other at the very least. <laughs> it sets up that they don't like each other, especially because considering that I'm pretty sure Roman says in this episode, I don't like you. Like, straight up says that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he says, I don't like you. And then Virgil gets all upset. Oh, that's right! This is the first essence of Virgil listening to My Chemical Romance as well. Um, they line a little blood pump- uh, or when he, he goes, uh... The end credit scene, I'm yes. just doing my job. A little blood pumping is good for the old circulatory system. I love that line. I have a, um... You know how s- some artists- Sorry. Sorry, I just realized that that's not the end card. That's like in the middle Yeah, that's not the end card. <laughs> Whoopsies! <laughs> That, um, that line, um, okay, so you know how some artists have, um, like, a drawing that they redraw every year? Yeah. I have, I have a drawing like that, um, and it's of Virgil, and it's with that line. Oh, I love that. Um, I think I have, I think I need to do, redo that drawing next month, too. I think it's- Is it time? I think it's- I think that drawing is in July, so it's- it's close to when I have to redraw that. Ow, fuck. (laughs) You okay? Um, yeah, my muscle just, like, tightened up in a hurry. Uh, spasm. Yeah. Okay, um... The- the, uh, perfect audio quality dub when he goes, this is actually a really good episode. This is actually a really good episode. Yes. This is actually a really good episode. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. That first, if I just noticed this earlier today, but yeah. does Lily's pillow pet kind of look like it's bootleg? A whaty? Her pillow pet, the unicorn. What about it? It looks bootleg. Oh, like it's fake? <laughs> yeah, like it's not on brand. Do you know what bootleg means, dude? <laughs> a bootleg, yeah, okay, I just didn't, under- I didn't hear you. I didn't understand the word that was coming out of your mouth. But yes, I know what a bootleg <laughs> is. Meow. <laughs> I know what a bootleg <laughs> is. Meow. <laughs> 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 I know yeah, what a bootleg I- is. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. Um, How dare you. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's Pigeon. probably on brand, but I lo- I really Pigeon. paid attention to it for the first time today, and I was like, that kind of looks bootleg. But I actually have I have a story about unicorn pillow pants. I'm scared. I'm so scared. Please go on. It's not. It's 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 not like that. It's um. It's not a bad story. It's just what the hell. <laughs> when I was a kid, and pillow pets were coming out. I really, really, really wanted the dolphin. I wanted that dolphin pillow pet so fucking bad. I wanted a dolphin pillow pet of every size. I loved those dolphin pillow pets, but because I was a little girl, 
Everybody always gave me that fucking unicorn. I had multiple unicorns and no dolphins, and I was so mad about it. And my friend, um, my friend, he got, he got all kinds of pillow pets. He got the dog, he got the bee. The I was bee? so jealous. I was so jealous that he got other pillow pets and everybody, because I was a girl, they always gave me the stupid freaking unicorn one, and I was like, no, I want the dolphin, but I never got the dolphin, and I'm still salty about it to this day. Have you still not gotten the dolphin? I don't have a dolphin pillow pet. I what would buy it? one, though, if, if, like, if I saw <laughs> one. <laughs> if the dolphin came to you. <laughs> um, I... I I don't know if this is quite right, but I feel like this first episode might have been also been the birth of Pringsiety as a ship. It was the first episode that they first interacted with each other, and a lot of people do like the enemies to lover bullshit. So for for them to be fighting against each other almost immediately, people were just like, mm, "I'm a ship that." <laughs> I yeah, think. they they are kind of a, they're established as sort of rivals, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, of course, if you're rivals, two characters who are rivals are always going to be one of the most popular ships in the fandom. It usually, it usually ends up that way. So, and they're the first rival pairing that, like, really, like, shows up. Mm-hmm. So, I'm not surprised that they were one of the first ships. Shop, get off the computer! Thank you, kitty cat! Um... This is one of the first ships that shows up, minus the glasses gaze, because, again, it's another opposites attract situation for Logan logicality. And Patton, Logan and Patton logicality, yes. The thing about logicality is, it's one of those ships that is really popular, but there's not, but they're always in the background. There's not a lot of content where it's just logicality as the main focus. <laughs> they're the background ship. You're just like, what they're do I do the with them? They're the popular background ship. I don't know if there's, like... But, yeah, sometimes there's fandoms where that happens, where it's, like, it's not really anybody's favorite ship, but it's one of the most popular, and they're always in the background. I definitely know people who Logicality is one of their favorite ships. Usually, um, it's people who simp for Logan and Ken Patton. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Your your kin and your simp character are always going to be... Like, one of your top ships. It's going to be one of your top ships. I... Yeah. Okay, prove it. <laughs> pro All right, now your turn. Go, prove it. <laughs> what, me? My favorite ship? Yeah, well, now you have to say who you kin, who you simp for, and what you ship. <laughs> I kin uh, and simp for... Virgil and Remus, and that Duke's Eye is my favorite ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, Anxi is Anxi and Intralogical are also those three ships are my favorites. I respect that. I respect that. Anxi is a very good ship. Um, it's and I dramatic. wish it was more popular. It's so dramatic. People turn the t people tend to make them um, X's a lot. Yeah, I totally under I get major like X's, bitter X vibes from them. Absolutely, canon. <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. So I, they're so petty. There's <laughs> so I remember Ink C. I has, I've told I think I told you this before. Well, but again. I'm gonna blow everybody who's listening. I'm gonna blow all your minds, and I'm gonna say, I was the creator of the ship name Inksy. Were you seriously? Yeah. You didn't tell me that. What the fuck? I didn't. I thought I did. I might have oh told someone. Oh my god! Else. Did you seriously? Coin yes. Term? Okay. So there used to be this um, semi-popular. I don't know. Okay, there was this popular persona on Tumblr. Mm -hmm. And for a little bit, they were, like, the leading, uh, angsty person. But they were talking about, hey guys, we need to brainstorm ship names. And I sent them an ask, and I was like, what about angsty? And they were like, yeah, that sounds cool. And then it stuck. <laughs> and then everybody else used your idea. Mm hmm So yeah, I, angsty, I was the creator of the ship name. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome! <laughs>
Oh, no wonder you're obsessed with it. Yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember I though that. when. Hmm. I do respect that though. Good for you. You made your mark on fandom. <laughs> yeah, Angsty isn't the only ship name I've come up with. I've come up with ship names in other fandoms that ended up sticking. Oh. Um, well, we're only talking about Sandersite, so meh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have I have my fingers, I have my grubby little fingers permanently stuck into the fandom now. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get rid of you. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, but anyway, Janice isn't even a character yet, so we Janice. should stop talking about it. <laughs> oh, I guess. I guess. So, on to episode four. Uh, a New Year of Lying to Myself is the first song. song! This is the first song! Oh. Lies, 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 I can't sing. <laughs> I, can, I can barely sing. Um, I can't sing properly. I like singing, I enjoy singing, but I can't sing properly. <laughs> there's technique that Same. goes into it. I, there's technique, Same. and I just I don't have I love singing. That. I love singing, but I can't. I don't have a singing <laughs> voice. <laughs> well, when you're singing a new year of lying to yourself, you don't need to be good at singing. Because you're lying to yourself, so you don't need to do uh, it. <laughs> so, this episode, first episode where they continue the adultery joke. <laughs> first episode where they continue the adultery joke, and also one of the first episodes where we start to see Logan be a little bit more like, I want my sh time to shine and be the important character in mm -hmm. in the series um the logic behind the head the logic behind that is usually because Patton had his own episode virgil had his own episode and roman kind of helped during all of that so it's like he's got his own thing going and so logan was just like i want to do something now i want to be i want to be the one that helps you and it doesn't work <laughs> this is where they start yeah. arguing with themselves so much like in this yeah um there's also something i want to point out is that in this episode logan is like i care about knowledge and Patton is like i care about health and then that for, that just for some reason that just totally changes later episode in later episodes Patton cares about health and then later on, Logan is the one who's just like, you need to be healthy in order to mm -hmm. gain Logan knowledge. is the health character. And then Log uh, Patton is all about just being happy. Mm -hmm. They're, they start Did to someone develop... say Prince? <laughs> did someone say Prince? No. <laughs> no. That, I like that joke. No. Did someone say Prince? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey! Uh, when, when do we start getting all the princey nicknames for everybody else? Like, especially for Virgil. Like, they, they do so much. Well, he calls him emo... Does he... Wait. Oh my gosh. Which episode does he call him emo nightmare? The next episode. Literally, I, it could be I any think. of them. He no. Calls, wait. He calls... He calls, um... My chemically My notes are out realms. of order. He calls uh, him... He calls... Oh my gosh. Roman calls know. Virgil emo nightmare in this episode, in the end card. Does he? You... Are an emo, or an emo nightmare. nightmare. However, Thank I you. will say I will say my one of my favorite things about like this episode specifically is that Roman asks Virgil like, "Hey, what is your um, New Year's resolution?" And Virgil's like, "I want darker eyeshadow to match my soul." He gets that. It's fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't come until um, later, but he gets so, it. Um, as an emo, certified <laughs> genuine emo. Uh, I love the, um, I love cliche emo stuff. Oh my and, god. like, the stereotypes. I think they're so fucking funny. So I, I, I love when Virgil's like, better, <laughs> better, <laughs> darker eyeshadow to better match my soul. <laughs> it's so what, funny. Did, did it just hit your soul right? <laughs> what? Did it just hit your soul right to hear him just be like, that I was... want darker eyeshadow? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just funny. Mm -hmm. Um, cliche Ooh. emo stuff. I wish we got more cliche more emo stuff for Virgil because we don't. For him, for be for him being emo, being like half of his character, we don't actually get a lot of emo stuff. 
you have very big opinions on like the subculture of emo itself that i I have so many uh, (laughs) opinions (laughs) that i just don't (laughs) i mean i have opinions on other subcultures but emo is like my main thing so obviously that's the one i'm gonna have the most opinions about and i have um i don't like when emo is misinterpreted as it so often is <laughs> by mainstream by mainstream by the mainstream people <laughs> media whatever <laughs> the mainstream it's too mainstream when it comes to fan content i think you can you can absolutely tell when somebody actually knows about the emo subculture versus somebody who's just like who doesn't <laughs> People, um, Virgil's character was definitely the first one that the fandom got wrong. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I remember there are, even like in the super early episodes, there are, um, there's, you can still find fan fictions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Virgil gets oo-wooed by the fandom immediately. It almost <laughs> immediately. Yeah. I, I started, uh, when I was still like consuming fanfic a lot, like more regularly, I started exiting out of fix when they started making Virgil cry, and I was like, I'm done now. Oh my gosh, I hate- it I drives me insane when there's a fan- when the fan- when the interpretation is like, Oh, somebody bumped into Virgil, now he's gonna go cry in his room and, and cut himself. Oh, it drives Bruh. me nuts. Bruh, that is so inaccurate for his character. I don't even care. If you bu- I think if you bumped into Virgil in the hallway, he- d- they hit you back twice. He hit. He'd hiss at you. He'd hiss at you. He'd hiss at watch you. where you were going. Virgil hissing. That's it. I absolutely adore that it's as a whole so thing of his character, because, um, as an autistic person, <laughs> sometimes it gets very difficult when I'm excited about something or I'm in a rush to get something across. Mm-hmm. I have a very difficult time verbalizing stuff. So if like. Somebody, if somebody does something I don't like, uh, I'm getting really excited for some reason. <laughs> but if somebody does something I don't like and I can't get the words out fast enough, I will hiss. Hissing I and growling that. are things I actually do. So I love when Virgil hisses and growls at people. It's. I honestly think it's a really good thing for his character, and also the fact that hissing is like a warning and like again, not a nice thing to do, which is what exactly anxiety isn't. It's not nice. We do get to see mm-hmm. a lot more of that in this episode as well, because, like, he's basically he's saying- He's a meanie! He's basically saying, you suck, and you're lying to yourself. Shut the fuck up, basically. He's also yeah. trying to tell you- He's also trying to tell Thomas not to do anything, which is part of, like, the procrastination aspect of anxiety. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. like, he's also just trying to make Thomas feel anxious about all of his bullshit, and quite honestly, I respect that. <laughs> Fun fact about this episode, I don't know if it was the episode or if it if it was the the song, but or if it was both. But this it was written the night before filming. Like, did Thomas actually like? Was that like a director's commentary thing or? Mm-hmm. How do you, yeah, how do you, he mentions it. it. I don't remember if it was the song or the script or both, but he says that it was written the night before they filmed. That actually that actually happens in the episode too. Lo- he's just like I will not procrastinate anymore and Logan literally holds up a sign that says you wrote this song last night. <laughs> oh, di- oh fuck, did he? Yes, yes he does. <laughs> yes, okay, okay. <laughs> I totally I've never really paid attention to what they that what they held up. Yeah, no, Logan holds I've up been a in this, says, I've been in, I've seen this multiple times, I've been in this fandom since 2017, but I never paid attention to that. Oh my god, yeah, no, he holds up a sign that says you wrote this song last night. <laughs> oh, so it was the song, yeah. Oh my god, that is so fucking funny though. God damn it, Thomas. <laughs> um, he also says that, I think the song, it was inspired by La La Land. That makes sense. I've never seen La La Land. Me neither. <laughs> Um, I don't know what it's about. I don't. That's what Thomas says. So I can't confirm if it sounds like it or not. Can neither confirm nor deny because I honestly don't know either. 
<laughs> I've never seen uh. La La Land. <laughs> but this is one of the first episodes where they do start arguing a lot more. Like, this is the first, like, real big, like, argument episode. Every other one has been just a little bit more of, like, a conversation. But taking on anxiety and then this one itself, the New Year of Lying to Myself, is especially when the main or what most people will come come to terms as the main three and or the core four start, like, arguing so much more. Logan is trying to do this thing. Patton's trying to do this. Roman just wants all the attention for himself. Again, also, mood. And then Virgil comes around and just fucks everything up in the best way. Okay? We're saying that in the best way. But... Um, I think it's really fitting how the first... Um first conflict episodes are the mm-hmm. ones where Virgil shows up. I mean, he's, he's, he starts to become plot as well, because it's just like anxiety itself is something to overcome just like a plot line is. So it's just mm-hmm. like, for sometimes, yes, he does have like good points that he accidentally, sort of accidentally brings up, but it's starting to like, it gives them something, it helps make the episode... <laughs> It helps make the episode um, plot-driven in its own way, but, like, contained to the episode itself. So it's just, like, for this one, it's just... He's trying to figure out what he can do for the new year, and his anxiety is telling him, your goals are too big. And so he's just like, okay, in order to solve that problem, I shorten my goals just a tiny bit to something that's a little bit more manageable for me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which he does. Which he does. <laughs> I'm nodding my head. Yes. Also... Virgil has no qualms about singing, and I love that because Thomas. No, to- Logan sings. <laughs> Virgil sings. Everybody, what is happening? Everybody sings. Yes, but Virgil never has problems with singing, which is something that, like, for Thomas, character or otherwise, he sings when he's scared. Because, like, if he when he plays like the video games and stuff like that, when something scary happens, he immediately oh. starts singing. And so it's just, like, for his anxiety to not have a problem singing makes a lot of sense because that's, like, a coping mechanism for him. That's, like, one of his reflexes when he gets anxious or scared is to start singing random ditties. So it's just, like, for Virgil just being able to, like, bust out tunes, it's so good. (laughs) Virgil's little hand, uh, the only notes I have uh, left are just, like, a couple of small ones. You're good. Virgil's um, hand movement when he goes, when he does that lies, 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 lies. And he has he has the two his hands are spread out, but he has the two fingers touching and stuff. And he like moves his hand the way he moves his hand and how he holds it and stuff. Um, that's a stim for me. Is it? Did you pick yeah. that up from him? I picked it up from from that episode. <laughs> Virgil. Oh my gosh, I have s- multiple stims that I picked up from Virgil. <laughs> oh my god! Um, like in the bloopers episode where he goes. Bleh. And his, like, tongue is hitting the sides of his mouth. That's a stem for me. (laughs) (laughs) This is also one of the first episodes, like, um, A New Year of Lying to Myself is when they first, as a group, kind of, like, take down anxiety, which is going to start that mob Mm -hmm. mentality that they have sort of against Virgil. Sort of. Oh my gosh, the mob mentality thing against Virgil. I have so many thoughts about that, but Mm -hmm. I want to wait. To okay. have an episode where we where we cover the playlists, okay, because it would be more relevant then. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. But I have so many thoughts about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I do think first something I do want to mention though is that something that becomes a part of like Virgil's character though is like the mouth thing and the eyebrow raises. He does them so much during like the rest of his episodes. It's mm-hmm. so good. Like, I love all the little characters, like, ticks and, like, things that they do on their own. Because we were talking about stims, but, like, Princey's little hand motion thing. You know, Logan touching his glasses and or fixing his tie. And then yeah. Pat, d- dad jokes. Jokes are his stim. That's what I've decided. Their, their whole... Their... I want to, like, praise Thomas's, like, acting. <laughs> yes. Um, these care He's so good at, like... He's playing all of these characters... And it's a thing that fans bring up a lot, how they yes. easily forget that they're played by the same person. Yeah, oh he's God. they just like the little movements, the inflections and how they speak and everything. It all it's just they feel like completely different people. 
No, he does a good job. He does an amazing <laughs> job of like being different people, but also at mm-hmm. the same time being parts of himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I love it. <sighs> They're so good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> That's all there is to say. It's so good. <laughs> but yeah, that marks um the end of this episode, I guess. Oh yay! <laughs> In the next episode, which should come out two weeks from now, we will be covering the next four episodes. Yes. And so keep an eye out for that, everyone. Are you going to do any kind of like down in the comments below, ask any questions you want us to answer or any like, here's the link to find me and or you or... Yeah, we'll have links to our social medias and whatnot Mm -hmm. down below. If you have any questions or if you have any other commentary that you want to bring up, put it in the comments, yo. (laughs) Or if you want to suggest some kind of episode you want us to do in the future, too. Mm -hmm. If there's anything fandom related that you want to hear talked about or anything like that, please let us know. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, we'll be covering the next four episodes um in our next episode <laughs> <laughs> take it easy guys gals and non-binary pals <laughs> peace out <laughs> <laughs>